There are several types of heat disorders. Heat cramps, which include cramps at limbs, abdominal cramps, sweating profusely, etc. Heat exhaustion. Under this, people suffer through dizziness, confusion, sweating with pale, clammy skin, high temperature, nausea, and rapid breathing. At last is heat stroke, the most serious. This causes restlessness, confusion, unconsciousness due to hot weather. These types vary by their symptoms, whether and by how much body temperature is elevated, and by the severity of blood fluid and salt depletion. Body fluid and salt depletion result from excessive sweating and can lead to low blood pressure and painful muscle contractions. Heat disorders are caused by excessive heat production, ineffective heat loss, or both. Excessive heat production can be caused by infections that cause fever, increased thyroid activity which speeds up the body's metabolism, strenuous muscle activity which may occur during exercise or physical labor, particularly among obese people, or can result from disorders such as seizures, agitation, or alcohol or drug withdrawal. Certain drugs would also increase the risk of heat illness. Ineffective heat loss is most common in hot and humid conditions. It is caused mostly because of heavy and tight clothing that does not breathe. Wearing such clothing prevents cooling of the body by preventing sweat from evaporating from the surface of the skin. It can also occur due to certain drugs most often antipsychotic drugs and drugs with anticholinergic effects. Obesity interferes with heat loss because a thick layer of fat is a good insulator. The chance of developing heat disorders increases with sudden exposure to heat. The following are the measures to be taken to prevent heat disorders. One should ensure adequate ventilation or air conditioning during heat waves, particularly for people who are very old or very young. Avoid leaving children in automobiles in the hot sun, particularly with closed windows. Avoid strenuous exertion in hot environments and poorly ventilated spaces. Avoid inappropriate, heavy, insulated clothing. If exertion in heat is unavoidable, wear open mesh clothing. The major electrical injuries can be attributed to the use of faulty appliances, high voltage wires, blown down in gales, and lack of proper insulation and power tools and many more. Now we will understand how to manage the situations of electrical injuries in little condition. When a victim gets electrocuted and the passage of electrical currents stops the victim's breathing and heartbeats, in such cases, put the victim on the dry insulated material. For example, wooden box, plastic mat, etc basically on any material where current cannot flow. Electrical current can cause burns internally too. In this case, use a broom made of wood to push the victim's limbs away from the electrical source. This will decrease the injury. In some cases, persons may be still electrically charged or live when you reach the scene. In such a situation, loop a length of rope around the victim's ankles or arms and pull him away from the source. Drowning is the process of experiencing respiratory impairment from submersion or immersion in liquid. The possible outcomes of drowning are classified as death. Most drowning victims don't yell or wave their arms to alert someone that they are in trouble. They are in a state of shock and they are often silent. There are typically five stages to drowning. First stage is surprise. In this stage, the victim recognizes danger and becomes afraid. The victim assumes a near vertical position in the water with little or no leg movement. The arms will be at or near the water's surface, making random grasping or flipping motions. The head will be tilted back with the face turned up. Victims rarely make any sound. They are struggling just to breathe. This is involuntary breath holding stage. In this stage, the victim has now dropped below the static water line and the body in the attempt to protect it initiates involuntary breath holding. This occurs because water has entered the mouth and causes the epiglottis to close over the airway. 
Though a victim may continue to struggle, he or she will not usually make any sounds as he or she cannot breathe. Without oxygen, the victim will lose consciousness. This is an unconscious stage of the victim. Because the victim has been without oxygen, the body shuts itself down as unconsciousness results. In this stage, the victim will be motionless. Because breathing has stopped, he or she is in respiratory arrest. There is no chest movement or breathing sounds. At this point, the victim sinks to the bottom of the water, either slowly or rapidly, depending on factors such as the amount of air trapped in the lungs, body, weight, and muscle mass. The victim will remain unconscious and die unless breathing is reestablished. This is hypoxic convulsions stage. In this stage, due to the lack of oxygen in the brain, the victim may look as if he or she is having a convulsion, which is why this stage is called the hypoxic convulsion stage. The victim's skin turns blue, especially in the lips and fingernail beds, and the body may appear rigid. There may be violent jerking of the body and frothing at the mouth. The final stage in drowning process is called clinical death. Clinical death occurs when both breathing and circulation stop. The victim is in cardiac arrest. The heart stops pumping blood. The vital organs are no longer receiving oxygen-rich blood. The lack of oxygen causes the skin to turn blue. This is called biological death. Here are a few preventions that you can take while the fire strikes. First of all, you should not attempt to rescue a victim if it puts your life in danger you should know how to crawl low under the smoke to escape. This should be practiced beforehand to prepare you for an actual fire. Close the door when you exit a room and feel a closed door before you enter the room. A hot door or doorknob usually means the room is on fire. If your clothes are on fire, drop to the floor and roll to smother and put out the flames. Get everyone out quickly, then call for emergency assistance. You should know how to give accurate directions to your house when you call for assistance. The medical term for fainting is syncope. Fainting is a sudden loss of consciousness, usually temporarily and typically caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain. The brain oxygen is deprived and has many possible causes, including hypotension or low blood pressure. The following are signs and symptoms that may precede a fainting event. A feeling of heaviness in the legs, blurred vision, confusion, nausea, and sweating. The person should take all the necessary precautions if he or she is facing the symptoms of fainting. If you see somebody fainting, just place the patient on his or her back facing up. If the individual is breathing, raise their legs about 12 inches or 30 centimeters above the heart level to restore blood flow to the brain. Try to loosen all belts, ties, collars, and restrictive clothing. If they remain unconscious for more than about a minute, put the patient into the recovery position and get emergency medical help and check the patient's airway for any obstruction. Epilepsy. Seizures or fits occur due to a disturbed brain function. This arises due to different causes which vary from person to person. It generally causes unconsciousness, convulsive movements, clenched jaws, and it usually lasts for just a few minutes. Sometimes fits are related to a temporary condition, often arising as a result of exposure to or withdrawal from drugs or alcohol. Some of the important causes of fits are developmental problems or congenital problems are known to cause fits. Prenatal or neonatal injuries may also be the cause factors. Injury to the brain such as a head injury, excites the brain tissue abnormally. Fits generally commence within two years of the injury. This is commonly observed in young adults. Disorders such as stroke or TLA affect the blood vessels. They are the most common reasons for fits in the elderly. Hormonal changes during menstruation or pregnancy can also induce an epileptic attack.
relaxed. Don't panic, just move back. Move any potentially harmful object out of harm's way to prevent injury. Do not restrain the person and give him or her head support. How to give emergency medical aid to seizure patients. Hysteria is described as unmanageable emotional excesses. People who are hysterical often lose self-control due to an overwhelming fear that may be caused by events in one's past that involved some sort of severe conflict. Disturbed behavior of person can be due to stressful situations or alcohol and drug abuses. Due to certain physical disorders, examples would be hypoglycemia, epilepsy, or due to head injuries. It may also occur due to some sort of mental disorders, example, anxiety. If a person is suffering from hysteria, then try to talk to them calmly if you can. Find out the cause of the problem. Don't argue with the casualty. It may make the situation worse. Call the doctor or police if necessary to control the condition of the casualty. Do not put yourself in danger nor restrain the casualty.